Hello, hello! Welcome back to my channel, The Diaries of DIY Danny, a place where I share my love of DIY and help solve your home decor dilemmas with a DIY solution. This is now part two of a three-part series that I didn't realize that I was making until I made part one. <laughs> I've linked it here. Go watch that first before you start watching this one. I updated two pieces of furniture in this living room. Go bold, go yellow. <laughs> I hate it so much. I'm gonna paint it black. Maybe I can move over to the side table. And that kind of escalated into an entire journey of me finding what is my design style, what I actually love in my home, what kind of pieces that I want to invest in, and what kind of DIYs that I wanna make that's gonna last a long time. So today I'm going to be updating a few pieces in my living room and DIYing some stuff that I hope that you guys can also find inspiration through and maybe it'll encourage you to update a couple items you have in your home. So let's go DIY vlogging. Boop. So it's been a few days since I've painted the side table and the back piece. Also that lovely, lovely ladder. Just obsessed with this. I took off the gallery wall that I had back there. I also removed everything from the shelf and I'm starting to realize now living in this space a little bit with everything removed, how much I enjoy minimalized space. I just had too much stuff in here. But the first thing that I noticed after taking everything off of this shelf was the general vibe of it. For those who don't know, I actually repurposed this shelf from Alexandra Gator. I built her these built-in shelves and then she was getting rid of these. I was like, I need bookshelves. So we did a trade off and Gator definitely made them her own. She had this lovely backsplash. It's like the polka dot, it's very her. And this might be a little controversial. I wanna change it. <gasps> I love Alexandra's style and I love these polka dots, but after reflecting, I realize it's not quite me. I actually have some peel and stick wallpaper. I think it's gonna suit my style a lot better. So that's the first thing I'm gonna be focusing on, which is adding a little bit of personality that suits me. Also, Gator doesn't know that I'm doing this, so don't be mad at me. <laughs> If you're ever having issues at home where you're not really sure what kind of style you want, create a mood board. You will be flabbergasted by how much this is gonna help you. So I wanna show you guys the mood board I put together. As you can see, I created a color scheme at the top. These are colors that I was interested in seeing incorporated into the space or colors that I've already incorporated. There's a lot of natural wood elements, dark wood and light wood. There's some faux fur, which is adding some texture that I love. Plants, of course, I love plants and I love the feeling of nature brought into a space. I'm mixing metals. There's a little bit of a vintage vibe. And then I love this like modern Scandinavian style. We have like a white wood tone, which is very farmhouse. Not everything is reflected in that, but by creating this mood board, it really helped me shape the room that I wanted to do and what kind of DIYs I wanted to create within it. Doggo, are you excited for this living room update? You find this riveting, don't you? Thanks for being my support buddy. So first thing I had to do was remove everything off of my shelf. Carefully put it onto the ground. Just like that. And remove the backing. It's just held in by small nails, so I just used a hammer to lift it all up. It definitely took a little bit of finagling. Ugh, the joys. Yay! <laughs> That was slightly difficult, but we got there. Okay, so through my DIY hoarding, don't judge me. I have two rolls of peel and stick wallpaper. It's like a rustic faux wood. Isn't that fun? This is gonna look so beautiful and definitely in line with my style. I guess how what I need to decide is how it should be covered down. Like, should I go long wide like this and make it look like boards going across? How did they do it in the picture? Oh, they do, so they do it this way, which I actually think might be easier. Yeah, read the packaging and follow the steps. I just have to make sure I line it up nicely. So I'm using two devices to do this. I have my blade and I have this. It's got like a soft edge on one side and a hard plastic edge on the other. You ready, Pup Pup? Great. So I'm just gonna peel up this corner. You with me, Kenobi? 
not too bad. What do you think, Kenobi? Spots are rustic. <laughs> Me too, man. Found it. Just the rest of the board to go. <laughs> Do you remember when I was showing you guys on my mood board those really nice uh, matte vase, vases, vases? I say vases, or do I say vases? Vases. <laughs> I was showing you guys those three vases. Oh my God, I can't get past it. Vases, let's go with vases. There was a white, a black, and a terracotta color. I can't go out and buy these things, so why not try to DIY them using things I already have in my house? I figured the best thing to use is chalk paint, and I do have white chalk paint, but I know some of you out there might not have chalk paint, so I thought, let's create a DIY chalk paint. Fun, right? I found a recipe online, and I haven't tested it yet, but I figured now is a good time to do it. All you need is regular white paint. This is just like a regular household white paint, and baking powder magic baking powder because we are making magic. When you put these two things together, it makes chalk paint. I don't know how, but apparently it works. Who's excited? I am. Let's make some chalk paint. So I need one cup of white household paint and then one teaspoon of baking powder. And then you just wanna mix this until it starts to bubble. bubbling yet. Well, maybe it's starting to bubble a little. So let's just do this. Oh yeah, definitely thicker than a regular household paint. Does it look like chalk paint? Kind of. It definitely has a chalky appeal to it. Actually, it adheres to the bottle very well. So we I'm gonna let all of this dry. I'm gonna do a second coat on it and then I am going to report back on general coverage and did it work? <laughs> Let's see what they turn out to look like before we say this is DIY Danny approved. Oh, good morning. Are you being nice to Teddy? You treating him like your baby? Oh, that's not what you do to babies. Oh no, Teddy. Do you have to destroy his face like that? You want some privacy? Okay, so it's the next day. I literally just woke up, but <laughs> I wanted to update you guys because these look amazing. I would say our DIY chalk paint is a total success. It's exactly how I wanted it to look, and I'm pretty impressed. Look how beautiful and mad they are. I'm just so excited that everything's coming together. Now that we've proven that this does work, I felt a little bit more okay with going back to using chalk paint that I had because they are in the colors that I, l I need to make the living room, so I hope you guys can forgive me. I have my deep gray color, my dark green, and then I have my black. But I did wanna test if you could create this chalk paint using acrylic paints and not just regular household. I don't know the science behind it, I'm just gonna test it. I actually have two acrylic paints in here. This is Cadium Deep Red Hue, and then this is Raw Sienna. Together, they have created like an orangey kind of terracotta color. So I'm gonna add a little bit of baking powder to it. I need to do like way less because I'm using way less paint. So I'm only gonna do like, like almost like a pinch. And then we'll see how it goes. I don't know, we're experimenting. We're doing science! The other thing that I should note is that the type of brush that you use is going to create a different look. So if you're using a sponge brush, it's gonna create a little bit more of a smoother look, whereas if you use a brush, there's a bit more texture. It's definitely made the paint thicker. Like it's not, we're not moving. Like we're doing one of those Dairy Queen things. 
and ain't going nowhere. Let's move on to these ones. I am so excited to see these all come together. Ooh, not gonna lie, I kinda love that look. Just in love seeing all these colors together. Now, for the white. There's just such a nice fine line with the brush. It creates kind of like a brush stroke look. So pretty, kind of love it. So, I gave all the pieces a second coat and I have to say, I think we have a success. Honestly, they're better than I thought they were gonna be. Kind of shook. <laughs> with the acrylic, I'm impressed. I would say that's DIY approved. And this one actually turned out beautiful. And to be honest, I think it might be my favorite. I think the only difference between the faux and the real chalk paint is that the faux has a bit of a sheen to it naturally. Now, once I add the wax onto the real chalk paint, everybody's gonna have a sheen to it, but I think it's okay. <laughs> no, okay. So I'm gonna put a finish on them tonight, and then tomorrow we are gonna make all of the finishing touches to bring part two of this DIY living room journey all together. Good night. Good morning, it is a new day. It's nice and sunny out, so that feels nice. I feel like this room is starting to come together. But what I did this morning was I started to kind of corral all the items that I want to put onto my shelf. There's definitely a really nice vibe going on this table. All the colors of the new pottery that I've done, I just love. And then I got some of the mixed metals and the copper and plants and pitchers. These are all the items that I want to incorporate onto the shelf. But there's still one thing that I feel is missing and that is a really cool kind of like wooden garland. I would love to create it out of beads, kind of like the one I have right here. I love this one, but I kind of like where it is. So I want to make a new garland out of wood. If I had it my own way, I would make it out of wood beads, but I don't actually have the wood beads. And I can't order it online because it would take too long to get here. So I thought, well, let's get crafty and I'm gonna make one myself. I have this wood dowel. I actually use this for dry clay. You can see there's a bit of residue on here from the dry clay. So I think I can use this dowel to create a cool wooden garland that can sit on the shelf. So here is what I'm gonna do. First, I'm gonna sand down the dowel and remove any of the residual dry clay that was on it. Ooh, that's smooth. Then using my chop saw, I'm gonna cut the dowel into small discs that are a half inch thick. Just found a two by two. I'm gonna cut this up and use it as well. Aren't we crafty? That's a cool shape. Yes! And then using my drill press, I'm gonna drill in holes down the middle, sand off all of the sides to make them nice and clean. Then I'm gonna stain each piece in a nice warm brown tone. And once those have dried, I'm just gonna string them on using twine and knotting every once in a while to kind of give it some distance and a look. Well, I think that worked. I would say we have a DIY wood. Oh, oh that's way funnier. <laughs> One would say I did not do that right. There we go, a wooden DIY garland. <laughs> These shelves are gonna be Basically like, awesome. That shelf just came together so beautifully. How amazing does that feel now? Did I not nail the mood that I was going for or what? Styling these shelves, I definitely tried to find the approach of keeping things minimal and balanced. I love the DIY garland I created. I think it added so much whimsy and fun to the space while also pulling in those natural wood tones that I was looking for. Any extra books that I put on, if they didn't fit into the mood I was going for, I simply just turned them around. This is a really effective way to keep a neutral look when you have a lot of colorful books. 
Of course, I can't get rid of my magazines, so I simply just turn them around. I put them in these magazine organizers and I added a little inspirational message to remind myself to go here when I'm looking for new ideas. Of course, let's not forget about the lovely wallpaper that we put on the back. This definitely brought the entire vibe together. Yes, all the pieces look amazing on there, but paired with the white faux wood on the back, I think they really just complemented each other and it helped emulate the mood that I was finally trying to attain. And there you have it, part two of the living room transformation shakeup that I wasn't planning to film, but here we are now. I am so happy with the way that everything turned out. Finally, I have a living room that when I walk into it, I just feel good. I'm so close now that I've kind of nailed down my design style, but there are a couple things that still need to be done. In the next video, I am gonna be focusing on the last part of this living room to really bring it together, which is on that wall. I'm going to be creating some new art pieces, bringing in some new art pieces, and I'm excited to show you guys how it all comes together. So stay tuned for part three. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Is this kind of aesthetic uh, your style? Did you find inspiration from it? And uh, what would you have done to the shelves if you had a chance to? I'd love to hear your suggestions and comments and uh, I'll see you guys next week. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay home. Bye-bye.